Alright mates, how's it going? In today's video, episode 10 of Beyond the Dark Portal by Aaron Rosenberg and Christy Golden. I ended up making this one whilst I was on break, so it's a bit of a short one unfortunately. But let's go! Archmage Antonidas sat in his study, staring at a recently arrived scroll whilst frowning. It was grave news. Admiral Proudmore had reported the stolen boats from Menethil Harbour, the fact that it was a bunch of orcs that did it, and the worst part, dragons. But not just any dragons. The Horde had managed to enlist the aid of the Red Dragonflight during the Second War, and that was hard enough to accept or believe. But now they had help from the Black Dragons as well. How could the Alliance hope to stand against that? A soft tap at the door then interrupted those thoughts. Enter, Crisis. You left word that you wished to see me. Yes, I left word. Months ago. Where have you been? I had other business to attend to. Crasus was being a bit evasive, which Antonidas was not a big fan of. Other business? You serve on the Kirin Tor, Crasus. A fact I should not have to remind you of. If you cannot make time for such duties, perhaps someone else should serve in your stead. If that is truly what you wish, I will step down. I would prefer to remain, however. And I promise you that Dalaran and the Kirin Tor currently have my utmost attention. Antonidas stared for a brief moment, but then nodded. He didn't really want to sack Crasus. Bloke was cool. Powerful. Smart. Even if he was occasionally evasive. Take a look at this. The Archmage then thrust the report to Crasus and watched as he read it, with shock and horror growing on his face. The Black Dragonflight. My research leads me to believe the Red Dragons have no love for battle or bloodshed. They only serve the Horde under duress. But the Black, that pairing seems more logical and deliberate, and much more dangerous. I agree. You are our resident expert on dragon lore. Do you think there's any way to stop them? Or at least limit their effectiveness? I- The alarm sounded quickly and suddenly, and both wizards locked eyes. It took Antonidas a few seconds to identify which alarm it was and what that actually meant, but eventually- The arcane vault. It's being breached. Well, that wasn't good news. The arcane vault stood near the heart of the Violet Citadel and was protected by the strongest possible wards and magics. It held many of the city's most powerful artifacts. So without another word, Crasus held out his hand, Antonidas grabbed it, and the two teleported. And as they arrived within the vault and got their bearings at the sudden change of surroundings, they saw several men mooching about. Except, they weren't men. Not living, breathing human men anyway. Bloody Death Knights they were. Why were they here? What did they want? They certainly weren't hanging about near any of the weapons or destructive artifacts displayed around the room. They appeared to be gathered in the center, around another figure, clutching something in his hand. And as soon as Antonidas pieced together what it was, he kind of crapped himself. He has the Eye of Dalaran! As the Archmage yelled that, he'd already sprang into action, casting a Mystic Bolt with one hand while summoning the rest of the Kirin Tor with the other. However, as his Mystic Bolt caught one of the Death Knights in the torso, another of the ghastly creatures raised his truncheon and launched an attack of his own. And suddenly, Antonidas didn't feel so good. Like an icy hand had gripped his heart and started to squeeze, and it wasn't a nice feeling. Luckily for him though, another of the Kirin Tor then appeared, a dark-haired elven lady, buying Antonidas a bit of time to recover from the attack. But, as she cast an offensive spell, setting two death knights on fire, they countered said spell, and Antonidas watched in horror as the elven mage's body contorted, and her bones snapped. Sathera! No! Prince Kelthas, another of the Kirin Tor, then arrived, and as soon as he saw the fate of his friend and colleague, he looked pretty pissed. Kelthas! Don't let them teleport! The prince nodded and turned his full fury on the intruders, but the leader of the Death Knights simply snarled. To me! The few Death Knights that remained obeyed, forming back up around their leader, who was still clutching the Eye of Dalaran, and despite Kelthas's best efforts, the Death Knights' forms grew indistinct and they disappeared. Shit. It's not over yet. They can be followed and trapped. Antonidas then murmured yet another incantation, and in an instant, he, Krasus, and Kelthas found themselves outside, once again facing the Death Knights. <laughs> You're persistent, I'll give you that. You were swifter in the vault, but we are swifter here. There is nowhere to run. Who said anything about running? A strong wind then sprang up behind the wizards, causing them to stagger, and as they turned, they stared in horror. Did you think we'd come alone? It was the largest dragon Antonidas had ever seen, and Krasus, who stood beside the Archmage, went extremely pale and uttered a single word. Deathwing. The mighty dragon then swiveled his head at the sound of his name, and fixed his eyes on Krasus with a curious gaze. 
whilst the Death Knights went ahead and clambered atop the beast's back. I have what I came for. Let us be off. And off they went. Balls. They'd failed. The Archmage and the rest of the Kirintor were charged with protecting this city and its people. And tonight, they'd sucked at both of those things. One of their own had fallen, and the Horde now had the Eye of Dalaran. But what the bloody hell did they need it for? <laughs>